Cal L, also known as Calvin Ellis, was raised on Earth 23 after his homeworld of Krypton was destroyed, taking with it the greatest of all the planet's mightiest city, the science capital Dondrola on Vathro Island, his birthplace, along with his parents Jarrell and Laura, who luckily shot him to safety across space in a prototype Kryptonian rocket to places unknown. Fortunately, he safely made landfall on planet Earth and after was found and adopted by a poor but kindly couple who taught him to fight for the never-ending battle of truth, justice, liberty, and equality with an added touch of boxing skills if it got physical. So Calvin would impressively grow up to be both President of the United States of America and Superman, the last son of Krypton, as he took on the faces of evil with his trusty AI, Brainiac, that helped him run the country when he's not available by initiating robot replicas as his substitute. Furthermore, after President Superman would once again defeat his arch nemesis, Lex Luthor, he would discover that Lex was hiding a transmatter symphonic array machine when suddenly an alternate Lois Lane burst out from it with a now deceased Jimmy Olsen and human version of Clark Kent by her side. Now unsure to make up this alternate Superman, Lois tried to shoot him with a kryptonite laser, which had no effect on him since kryptonite wasn't his weakness in his universe. Moreover, their attack and pursuer, a violent, troubled, faceless, powerful anti-hero called Super Doom would emerge from the machine, and President Superman would begin to engage in battle with the behemoth, corrupt version of Superman from Earth-45, when surprisingly, Lex Luthor would intervene to temporarily help our hero, before President Superman finished and sent the Super Doomsday, labeled the last night of tomorrow, back to the transmatter machine, trapping the beast between wavelengths thus saving the multiverse from his rampage. Later on, President Superman and Wonder Woman Nubia will make their way to the country of Karak, which is the leading state sponsor of terrorism, to stop the President for Life, Harriet, from gaining the nuclear capacity through his secret nuclear program. So our heroes will go on to destroy five of his underground firestorm labs, while President Superman gave Harriet the opportunity to denounce terrorism, so he could be invited to join the Alliance of Nations. To do some good in the world. Moreover, Nubia will question President Superman's own moral capacity by him lying to the entire world as the United States President by not revealing his secret identity, violating international laws, as well as not actually being born in America, let alone planet Earth. Sometime after, President Superman would defeat a giant robot from unknown origins that used unfamiliar alloy with unusual atomic weight. However, the alloy was vulnerable to friction heat and impact damage. So President Superman next took the parts to the Justice League Watchtower for further analyzation, which the team will conclude. Indeed, the robot was made of unknown materials that used unearthly analog valve computer systems that degrade in contact with real world physics. Oddly, one of the parts was still functioning and was attracted to the transmitter symphonic array machine that suddenly activated on its own and sucked President Superman within it, taking him to a location between universes where he encountered another lost superhero, Captain Carrot, at a station outside time and space with more confused heroes present. So President Superman would eventually use his Brainiac AI interface belt buckle to link with the station's computer system in order to find out what was going on, which activated the Harbinger system that revealed the 52 greatest heroes across the multiverse were summoned to the monitor watch station known as Valor Hell, the House of Heroes, as a last defense after the cosmic being in charge of maintaining and balancing the multiverse was dead. So our heroes boarded a vessel called the Ultima Thule, a interdimensional super boat powered by sound vibrations. So President Superman, who was talented in playing the guitar, was tasked with powering the musical engine in order for the Ultima Thule to travel between universes, where it would take them to a world with superheroes unfamiliar but closely resembling those of the Marvel Universe, along with the rebirth of a now corrupt last of the monitors, Nyx Jotun, the Dark Monitor, who was on the verge of unleashing hell upon the multiverse, which he succeeded before being defeated by our heroes and freed from the corruption as they now faced an even greater threat, the Empty Hand, who teleported them away to Earth-8 after feeling they weren't ready to challenge him or his rule. So now at the House of Heroes, President Superman would take the lead in preparing for a full-scale invasion with a voluntary army of the greatest superheroes from 50 worlds, capable of reacting to cosmic level threats as the Justice League incarnate. 
our hero would next travel to New Earth to recruit Superman himself, who was with the Russian Superman Cal Al of Earth 30 after they just defeated an attacking herd of multiverse creatures called the Gatherers that were sent by their master named Prophecy to capture all 52 supermen and superwomen from parallel universes in order for him to drain their powers and absorb them. Thereafter, more of the Gatherers went after the Chinese Superman Kenan Kong of Prime Earth, which they managed to successfully capture. So our heroes decided to cross the multiverse and warn Superman who weren't captured yet about the upcoming threat, which some were hostile with the first encounter, while others were inclined to listen to reason and open minds and hearts to join the battle, which inevitably they will find, free, and restore the powers of the captured Superman and Superwomen, who then went on to attack and defeat the powerful cosmic being Prophecy, thus saving the multiverse from another threat to all existence. As time progressed, the Justice League themselves would hold a meeting at the House of Heroes with multiple multiverse heroes in attendance about the upcoming cosmic threat known as the Mother of the Monster, the Anti-Monster and the World Forger, Perpetua, a celestial being who created the multiverse that existed before the current one, before she became unstable. And now that her prison, the source wall at the edge of the universe had fallen, the fate of the multiverse would be in her hands as Perpetua would attempt to transform the multiverse into a new one. Subsequently thereafter, our heroes will go against one of Perpetua's allies, the techno-organic 12th level intellect hyper advanced being known as Brainiac. Surprisingly, Perpetua would win and vanish all heroes past, present and future away into nothingness for the exception of a handful of heroes. Later, back on Earth 23, President Superman's self-piloted bird plane one aircraft will be attacked by fierce dark energy creatures with incredible corrosive powers that appear below the Grand Canyon. So now that President Superman was injured by dark matter, he will make his way to the Oval Office of Solitude to find out more about the creatures, which revealed the creatures came from an alternate universe to consume the world with dark matter, when all of a sudden, the Flash Wally West from a parallel Earth appeared immediately attending to the injured President Superman before abruptly one of the creatures came crashing through the White House wall to finish President Superman off. Luckily however, Wally had in his possession a powerful staff that was given to him by the cosmic being Tempest Fujinot to successfully combat the creatures. Following this, President Superman's Justice League would show up and next confront Wally West since they didn't know who he was. So after President Superman let his Justice League know Wally was one of the good guys, Wally in an instant sped away with great speed to save the multiverse alone, which he did. With the staff of pure concentrated light, he sealed the terror between the worlds. While President Superman saved millions from dying after stopping the anti-life bomb Congress authorized to take out the creatures. Moreover, the day will be saved and another job well done by our heroes. Nevertheless, Perpetua's wrath wasn't over as she destroyed part of the Ori of Worlds, known as the House of Heroes, while only six of the 52 universes was left in existence before Jon Stewart called them in for assistance to finally take down Perpetua, which President Superman ended up facing Perpetua's ally Ultraman from the crime syndicate of Earth-3, and then next was attacked by evil Rainbow Bat Lanterns from the Dark Multiverse. However, in the midst of all the chaos, Owlman showed up and shockingly shot his teammate Ultraman with a yellow lantern bullet from the Antimatter universe. Now confused, President Superman and Wonder Woman decided to attack Owlman who previously captured Jon Stewart. Up until Jon Stewart himself stopped them and next informed them Owlman was now on their side. So our heroes next left that universe leaving Owlman behind to initiate the plan to try and stop Perpetua and a self-sacrificing move while our heroes retreated in their interstellar spacecraft to Earth Zero. Later in a shocking turn of events, a new dark god called the one who laughs will attack and kill Perpetua for control of everything in creation as the new god of the multiverse, leaving our heroes with a new cosmic foe to deal with after they encountered him in his new universe creations of the most horrifying twisted new versions of supervillains to go against our heroes and villains who join forces to fight together for the common cause. Luckily, Wonder Woman would defeat the one who laughs 
after she was charged with a connective force that links her with all history and lies called anti-crisis energy as she drew strength from her allies thus unknotting the timelines and restoring the multiverse with some of the multiverse history restarted with two earths now being in the center of the multiverse prime earth and elseworld now back home president superman will have a new assistant ai called Kalex. after his brainiac operating system broke free when it was corrupted by an algorithm that was weaponized by its own future self which almost caused world war 4 nevertheless president superman defeated brainiac however the persistent coding system was still loose in the shadow web so with the help of his ally, Machine Head of Earth-8, they hunt and contain the rogue AI. Thereafter, President Subban headed to Smallville, to his family farm for a little prayer, and next defeated Meta Knight Man outside the Pentagon, who is composed of his universe version of Kryptonite. Furthermore, President Superman, using a key that was given to him by the Black Martian, which can turn any door into a portal to a dimensional space, where sound and thought can't penetrate, used it to relax his mind for nearly four minutes, since the portal is meant for the healing of trauma from telepathic intrusion. As time progressed, a space pod would crash land within a farm on Earth-23, and President Superman's parents would be the ones to discover it, that held another variant of Batman from another universe inside. In fact, it was Thomas Wayne, the Batman of Earth-Zero. So after they contacted their son, who was accompanied by his Justice Incarnate, President Superman will find out Thomas was mysteriously teleported there by an unknown woman. So thereafter, President Superman would take Thomas Wayne to the White House inside the Oval Office of Solitude in order to locate Lex Luthor, who they found out designed the space pod. So after briefly consulting with his personal assistant, Courtney, who helped keep his secret identity secret, they would track down Lex with the aid of President Superman's assistant robot to a secluded area in the desert, only to find Lex Luthor was now deceased. Moreover, our hero's sudden new plan to save Barry Allen, who was on Earth Omega, was interrupted when Machine Head betrayed them and joined the Injustice Incarnate, led by Darkseid, to permanently stop dimensional hopping from ever occurring again, since it constantly put other universes in danger. As Machine Head next revealed, he was the one who killed Lex Luthor, who beforehand disclosed to him President Superman's weakness. So Machine Head equipped himself with Meta Knight to gain an advantage over President Superman in battle. Nonetheless, President Superman and the Justice Incarnate will still manage to defeat Machine Head along with the Injustice Incarnate, while also foiling Darkseid's plan to control the Omniverse, which unsurprisingly caused Darkseid to end the life of Machine Head with the extremely powerful bioelectric unavoidable Omega Beam, while thereafter he used his Omega Beam to also teleport both teams away to their place of origin. Subsequently, President Superman, accompanied by Thomas Wayne, will head to Earth Zero in Beijing to recruit the Flash, Avery Ho, to help save Barry Allen after he caused a crack in the multiverse using the Speed Force when he was influenced by Darkseid and now was stuck on Earth Omega. So our heroes, using their quantum treadmill, had Avery narrow down all possible locations of the crack using her Speed Force, which will allow their Harbinger AI to pinpoint the exact area they need to head to which they end up on Earth-8 and they destroy New York City, encountering a surviving member of the Retaliators and fighting off a new threat, the Conqueror and former ally to Darkseid, Tartarus and his minions, who was after the power beyond the crack of the multiverse, until Darkseid again showed up to claim the power for himself, which initiated a battle between the two, where Darkseid would inevitably triumph over the Thanos clone by snapping his neck. Meanwhile, our heroes used that distraction to find Barry Allen and retrieve the power beyond, only to inevitably encounter Darkseid once more in his attempt to accomplish his goal. Shockingly thereafter, it was revealed that the great darkness, who cares about good nor evil, but just wants nothing to be everything, just like before the Big Bang, is secretly and deliberately the one responsible for every multiversal crisis ever, unbeknownst to the villains causing the cataclysm in order to weaken the universe and extinguish the light so it could be free once again from its slumber, as Darkseid, who played a key role in stopping the Anti-Monitor during the Crisis on Infinite Earth, and is one of few aware of the existence of the Great Darkness, was really trying to prevent it from awakening. Moreover, our heroes would decide to temporarily join Darkseid, to now fight against the Great Darkness' greatest ally, the Empty Hand, along with his Gentry army, in order to stop the Empty Hand from releasing the Great Darkness out of the growing womb that was the crack in the multiverse. So President Superman would next 
going to gather all the multiverse heroes together to go against the dark army of the great darkness of possessed villains. Darkseid not being one of them after being influenced, thus causing a great battle of epic proportion to save all of existence, which they almost lost. However, luckily, our hero's resilience to win caused the Dark Army to temporarily retreat in defeat after suffering heavy blows. Nevertheless, our heroes will have no time to celebrate before they had to head back into battle, inevitably putting an end to evil until next time. That being said, Calvin Ellis is DC Comics President Superman.